Hey guys, it's Celine again. It's Tuesday, the 9th, yes, the 9th of May. So I have myself a little cup of coffee extra. It is uh, 2.30, just past in the afternoon. Mmm. Oh, nice. I've just been up to my eyeballs in Alistair Crowley research <laughs> on YouTube. So I spent the last hour and a half or so, probably more, probably more like two hours. That's a lot, you know, in one particular subject area. So I felt like it would be a good time right now to just, uh, you know, take it all down a notch. Come out myself again. I'm trying to get this bit of hair to go lie flat. <laughs> it doesn't really. Um, because you can only do so much of a single thing, at least for me, that's how it works. I can only do so much of a single thing before I need to sort of draw back in the energies to myself because there's been, you know, all sorts of things going on. Also, I've really neglected my channel over the past months, I think, and I don't like it. If I can reclaim... <laughs> my channel for myself then possibly it will you know end up benefiting other people um as well you know again and that's what i want i want us to have a, i want the internet and me to have a relationship if possible i've also been doing a lot of clearing out on my space on my table here and i can actually have a bit more access to my things i've got a ton of witchy things who doesn't so they're all sitting here in bottles of oils and bits and pieces and crystals and whatnot. So I've taken out basically everything that had to do with art, making pencils and markers and inks here that was just taking up like that much <laughs> of my table. So I had enough of that. I'm sort of finished doing uh, making art for now for a little while you know I, sh I just have to focus on other things for a bit now so i've had a lot of fun i've actually done a lot of um of drawing i'm also finding things like this little brooch for example that my mum gave me i will just stick it back in here as well um i have a witchy haul i think let me begin with this one i got as a present from my husband this wonderful volume it is the Tushin 2021 actually came out a uh, tome on uh, the history I suppose of the image or theme of witchcraft in culture and so there's as always in these volumes it's part of the esoterica uh, collection that they are making uh, which has become really popular also uh, on YouTube it is gorgeous it has these you know full color plates and it I loved I love this book I have the other one that I have is the plant magic one which is if possible even more exuberant and colorful and slightly mad you know so but it's not yeah, well, there's a lot of stuff in here. It has, you know, endless images. And you can, I suppose, what appeals to me for these is really um, all the different art styles, all the different approaches. There's, of course, a lot of female figures in here and a, f a lot of, you know, nature-connected content. It's really gorgeous. So... I was, uh, my husband had first located the tome on tarot. There's also one on astrology, neither of which I intend to buy myself because those are, um, that is not like an academic perspective for me. As far as tarot goes, I am a user, you know. I, I have a completely different relationship with tarot and astrology on the one hand versus this kind of stuff on the other this is art history and social and cultural history uh potentially some feminism thrown in there 
uh, depending on your perspective, you know, that kind of thing. Certainly also nature oriented perspectives, but there isn't going to be a lot of information other than art history perspective, really. There isn't really going to be all that much in here that I intend to use. It's not a study book, basically, because that's not my kind of relationship I get with these books. It's like the images give me all sorts of windows into perspectives. Um, but the, the fact that it's glorious art is more like I'm a consumer in these things. And whereas with tarot and astrology, I'm a user and I would only get frustrated if I had a, the, the volume on tarot and I subsequently discover a dozen or so tarot decks that I absolutely want to have when I won't be able to use them all or, you know, even if I manage to get them, I will find that they're, you know, it's just a whole story. So, yeah. So, whereas, so tarot is really very much a part of my life. This is also a part of my life, but at a very different level somehow. So, yeah. So, I've been enjoying this hugely, just leafing through this and discovering also uh, names of artists that I am sort of slightly familiar with, but not too much. And then going online to find out more about them and so on and so forth. Um, also, even some of the modern artists that are shown in here or that have bits, bits of text or poetry in here, are they are actually on YouTube as well. So it's very now and the Renaissance and the Victorian age and all the rest of it. So that is kind of, it's. I suppose this is in a secret way, this book actually has... Uh, a lot of uh, subculture and subversive, you know, going under the surface of um, normal mainstream muggle ideas, really. So a lot of feminism and similar uh, kinds of approaches to life and reclaiming of independence for women and that kind of thing. At in from all sorts of viewpoints. So it's not like it's a political or... Uh, taking a stance on any of these subjects necessarily. It just shows the range of things going on. Fascinating. So that was one thing, one really good thing that we went and got. We've been to another town uh, last Saturday. So last weekend we went, we actually took the train and uh, because there's this wonderful metaphysical store in that town. And nowadays in my part of the country, all the metaphysical stores kind of are gone. So there's a whole history there, which I is a whole separate department. Let me take another. Oops, sorry, another <laughs> sip of coffee. These need to be cleaned. I think they're sticky. It's probably the honey that I put in my coffee that um, sticks them up. So yeah, hence the clang. Um, what I noticed when I was in the metaphysical store. So there's this other thing. I um, I live in the Netherlands, okay? It's a rich country. We have plenty of things that we are actually rather proud of, of ourselves and that we should also uh, appreciate a bit more. We should be, <laughs> I think as a people, we could do with another dose of self-awareness, gratitude and those kinds of things, you know? in our lives, in this part of the country, in this part of the world. Um, over, the, over the past 20 years, from back when I was selling uh, incense for a company in types of stores like this one, like this metaphysical store I visited on Saturday, uh, I have noticed a massive change and it's like, the it's like all sorts of processes have happened during those 20 years there were of course periods of economic difficulty relative difficulty not only for us but also uh for the rest of the world you know in all sorts of ways and what is on offer in in a metaphysical store nowadays is very different from what used to be on offer and I think what happens nowadays is this, okay, this shop that I went to Saturday is actually fairly large. It's a decent sized shop 
and they apparently uh, make enough profit to be able to afford the rent, you know, because that is always a huge deal with nice old, certainly old shops in towns, in places around this country, is that the rent that people uh, are charged for, you know, the square foot <laughs> in uh, especially places uh, fairly close to the city centre are just off the chart and you're not going to be able to uh, make the necessary, you know, sales to be able to stay in places like that a lot of the time. I'm sure that there is a better description for that kind of an economic situation. It it creates a huge sense of uh, lack in towns uh, that I visit, that I get to visit nowadays. Because every, everything you get is chain stores, drug stores, shoe shops, all exactly identical. McDonald's, you name it, that's what, they've, what we've got, you know. And um, it's chains that are, you know, located in each and every single one of those towns. It, the thing is that you just don't go out anymore, if you're me, unless there's particular kinds of sh shopping, you know, groceries and stuff and supplies that you really need. You just don't go out anymore shopping for something that's fun to do. The connection between the street life, the retail world, the bookshops, the second hand, the vintage, the clothes, all the rest of that, and the fun is gone. Completely gone in most of the cases. So in this particular case, what I have seen happen over the 20 year period that I'm trying to talk about here is that um, first you had separate types of metaphysical stores, okay, back in the 80s and 90s, where they were mostly bookstores, bookshops, a lot of which actually also had a second-hand department because, you know, interesting content and valuable, even the occasional card deck or whatever else, you know, um, people would get pass on that kind of stuff back to a place where it could be sold again to a new owner. That kind of stuff is just, um, it, it is in my memory banks. You know, I remember shops being like that. And then there was a type of shop which was more health oriented. So an organic food store often where occasionally you would get incense and crystals and similar as well. And then there was like, so you had the bookshop, you had the health shop, and then you had, in terms of orientation and choice choice of, uh, you know, products that they sold. And very rarely you would actually get more like an, a metaphysical store that would actually also have, for example, music, fair trade products, uh, crystals, that, those kinds of things. Those kinds of product groups actually got added on to the bookshop basic theme is, is my, in my experience, is what I have seen happen, actually. And the incense got added in. People started asking for white sage to burn and the accoutrements that go with that. Uh, after that, we got the Palo Santo, you know, those kinds of things, resins to burn, etc. And there were, of course, suppliers who uh, imported resins and things like that also from elsewhere. So you might get lucky and actually find, uh, you know, church incenses or similar types of resins for burning on charcoal in a shop like that. And it sort of all accumulated and agglutinated into a, a shop that had a lot of different things, music and, uh, you know, CDs back in the day and so on. So the early 2000s were still, you still had shops like that. And I actually um, went and brought our incense products to uh, several stores like that back in the day. And it was always 
a lot of fun to work there. It was also a lot of fun to shop there because you could never, they had, they also still had a lot of books, you know, it was like this whole massive one side of the shop. One thing that one that I'm particularly remembering at the moment was just books. And um, of course, book sales have dropped rather dramatically over the past decades. So that is definitely an element in there. Also, the interest of people coming to shops like that isn't the same anymore. So for a while, for a long while, what I've seen happen is either shops closing down or changing their strategy to from books and CDs and amulets and talismans and jewelry and more and more, you know, down, winding it all down to basically crystals and some very popular, easily recognized um, semi-spiritual elements. In this country, what does that mean? I suppose statuettes of Ganesha, that kind of thing, is he's one of the popular ones that I also saw at the shop on Saturday. He's the, uh, you know, the Indian prosperity uh, god, really. So Indian statuary, uh, less and less, cheaper and cheaper, more and more affordable. And as, as the economic problems continued, you know, throughout the 2000s and onward, a lot of those shops actually just completely uh, ended up sh shutting down, you know. And um, it, was, uh, it was a tough time because as a customer, you ended up having no place to go at all and, and ever, you know. So fast forward to Saturday, what I saw here was that they have this huge number of different types of crystals on offer nowadays. I actually found uh, these bracelets there. So I normally have a crystal uh, supplier where I go buy my beautiful uh, quartz types and I've got all these wonderful other, you know, like elestials and uh, especially lots of quartzes and uh, black opal and all those kinds of things, you know, that's a different store. Those people are really specialized in crystals only. You will never find anything other than crystals at their location. And this is like in the middle of the countryside in the sticks far out. So that is completely incomparable. Those people are independent. They do their own business and they've, uh, you know, they've made different decisions and they're still very much uh they've been going strong throughout this whole 20 year period for only better you know on a rising line the whole time but the situation for a shop in town is very different so i found these so this is a carnelian set of pieces and this is red jasper this is mukite which is like a, i believe an australian type of jasper as well lovely combination i could just pick and choose from the basket baskets that they had with you know types of each nowadays what i saw okay in the shop what i noticed is the amount of floor space or shelf space uh, given to books is minimal tarot and other decks seem to be slightly on the rise because they had a fairly decent collection also a couple that i had never heard of you know but nothing too exotic. And what, what I notice now is that these shops aren't geared towards people like me who are always studying something, who are always into tantric philosophy, tarot, Alistair Crowley today, uh, the moon cycles, the moon calendars in the past, all that stuff, you know. I used to feel frustrated going into shops like that, looking for information, which now, of course, I find on the internet just as much as everybody else. On the other hand, this time around, what I noticed is that this is this is a shop that is really well cared for and they don't only sell easy to sell cheap things. So they had statuettes, statues of Kuan Yin, for example, that cost around 1500 euros, you know, in um, some kind of porcelain type. 
and really beautiful, well-made stuff. And similar, you know, lots and lots of different types of things on offer so that it would be appealing to actually go and shop there. It's the first time in well over a decade that I've actually been to a shop like this, a metaphysical store, and enjoyed the experience. So, yeah, <laughs> they had uh, quite some incense, but not heaps and heaps of it. So incense, of course, tends to be, because most of it is really low grade quality, tends to be a cheap shelf filler, you know, to uh, in shops like that. So the more incense they put out, often it is because, you know, it's easier, it's cheaper to put that in the shop than compared to, to crystals often, or certainly compared to books. So yeah, books are expensive to uh, upkeep in your shop. <laughs> So I really feel very sorry for everybody who's uh, who's into that kind of uh, business, who's who's inherited a shop like that from their grandma, you know. <laughs> it must be something else. So um, I was enjoying myself. We had lunch, my husband and I. We were just generally, there was a little chapel that we visited and lit a candle, a Mary's chapel and a couple of other things like that. I also, hang on, I have to check what I wrote here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, we went to a, a cat cafe. That was a first. So the cat cafe actually has eight cats. And it is, I will put a link in the Facebook page in the description to this, if I think of it, you know. Uh, you can So you can look them up. A really friendly location. I uh, wasn't aware how much it is a completely different setting because of the cats, because of the animals, you have to actually behave differently and you have to be a bit more quiet than in a normal coffee house. It's really not the same. A cat cafe or a coffee house is a completely different uh, kind of a setting. So we had uh, tea and scones there and husband, my husband especially is a real cat lover and... Um, he just got to, you know, talk to the cats a bit and uh, hang out some, you know, a bit with them. But it was very, it was actually rather busy. It was Saturday afternoon, of course. So there were, yeah, too many people, really. And you could tell instantly each time that more people came in the door that uh, the cats got annoyed or got... Um, they, you know, withdrew into themselves or sat very high up somewhere like over here, for example. That's not a cat. That's a kettle. <laughs> yeah. But it was a good experience in the sense that it was a really nice, cool, uh, quiet place to sit for a while. And it was a first for us. So, yeah, so that was awesome. And... Um, other than that, I also wanted to do some two more updating. However, I do notice that I um, don't have that much storage space on my phone at the moment. So I may save that for later because we've been doing a hell of a lot of two more work. And there have been developments in terms of my husband's uh, actual chakra activity increasing suddenly because of this. So it's interesting. It really is. And I think I should do that separately. So that's what I will do. Um, I've also been reconnecting with my Voyager tarot, as I mentioned yesterday. And I have sort of embarked on a little kind of a trajectory for myself using these cards where I actually try to envision them as I would see them when I was 14, 15 years old. So that it may be difficult, difficult to imagine. I don't know how to explain that properly, really. Um, I try to look at a lot of the details on the images here, which is like, this is my card of the day here. And um, basically just follow my intuition with whatever the details really mean to me at that time. So... The set of cards that I ended up having this morning um, had a lot to do with more like, this is the Two of Pentacles, actually Two of Earth card. hope this focuses a bit. Um, 
it ended up making sense eventually where this is the seeker card so this is the page of wands in the classical tarot i noticed that as i try to work with this it is very different from what i know as tarot it, it nearly isn't tarot actually it feels more like oracle which is what something some people actually have said about this deck where they just basically chopped off all the borders instead of just the uh, bottom and sides ones um it's like you need to figure out what a particular hand in a particular kind of configuration means to you i had a where's the einstein card i think it's this one yeah so here i have like this is the einstein card what i call that because of him being in there it's the king of swords king of crystals and so there's this hand in here and this diamond which obviously wasn't photographed in the hand but just superimposed, you know, cut out and pasted on top of the image of the hand there. One thing I notice is that on the one hand, there's the hand form itself to me suggests like grasping information or knowledge, grab, grabbing onto a perspective like this with that hand for me, that kind of brought that out for me the um faceted uh, cut diamond that is in there reminded me a lot of actually uh advertisements in old readers digests uh volumes that had short stories in them back in the 60s and 70s my grandpa had a whole row of those in his in one of his uh he was a he was a school teacher, so he had books everywhere. So one of his book cases had uh, a row of these, and they had advertisements. Some of them had advertisements, and they were paintings. It was an advertisement for a diamond cutting company, you know, with jewelry and stuff like that from the fifties and sixties. And I was, as a kid, fascinated by those diamonds in the sky. Diamonds in the sky. Yes, <laughs> I actually said that. So. It's very associative. This work is endlessly associative. And I have, I now that I'm saying this, I actually feel like I have already said this about this deck, of course, and I probably am not the first person to say this at all, ever, because it, it just comes to mind. In that sense, it is just way richer than your average, than just doing tarot work. I am... Glad I have the tarot work, the experience with the tarot, with the Marseille tarot that I've been using and the, with the Thoth and with the whatever else I've been using, the, um, the round decks that I got recently and so on, you know. But they're all very, the, 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 the ideas. So a page of wands is still very much a page of wands. This is way modern even though by now, in 2023, of course, it's ancient history. So, yeah, go figure. <laughs> I'm just going to finish my coffee now. I hope you enjoyed my little chat. I have more. I will save it for tomorrow, you know, or Thursday. We will come back and do a tumor update because, um, well, it has been intense. It also has been slightly less intense than the past couple of months where I just didn't know where to begin even. Um, but it was, um, it's like we're starting to see results more and more of the work that has gone before. And I want to make sure that I proper, I, I put that out properly, you know, in, in proper context. So that's a different story from shop history and retail and things like that. So thank you for watching. I'm going to finish my drinking now and go back to Alistair Crowley <laughs> because, you know, got to finish what I started. Thank you, my dears. See you next time. Okay, ciao for now.